So we're going to take this file and see it as version 5. Again, the reason I put the SSI there is just to remind myself that that's a server-side include page. Now, again, what you could do, the child tag, you could basically have a suffix before the HTML, say CH or CHILD. This way, you know, that's the child tag, the parent tag, parent, the parent file and the child file. The parent file is the file that is holding the child SSI, server-side includes. Now, let's solve this problem with why if this page didn't publish correctly. Okay, so I just want to share with you, we've done everything correct so far. Everything I've taught you is totally correct. So we go to File, and we go to Preview and Browser, and again, I'm going to pick Firefox. Testing server, yes. Dependent files, well, that branding file is already up there. So in this particular case, I could say dependent files, no. Okay. So when this gets to the server, guys, watch what doesn't happen. It loads the page, but it's not going to load the branding server side include, and here's why. Now, if this is a PHP page, this would work seamlessly. This PHP page or dynamically, and the server understands to include a PHP page. This is not a PHP page. This is an HTML page. What this has to be is an S HTML page, secure HTML page. So if we go back to Dreamweaver for a second, okay? So a simple way to fix this, now we can close the file, go to the desktop, go to the folder itself, and physically change the extension here. We're gonna do something, we're just gonna say file, save as. Now, we just need to put dot s for secure html so if you do now if most of you probably never heard of an s html file well that's why you watch my videos because i keep you up to date and i keep you in tune and real world technologies here this has been around for for about 15 16 years probably longer than that s html files have been around probably since as long as html files have been around i'm going to save that okay so now if i publish this to the server so now if i go to file Preview in Browser, which I have a real problem with this word Preview in Browser. I've had arguments literally with the Adobe that powers it be for the past, since Dreamweaver came out. Okay, well before that was Macromedia. Okay, Preview in Browser, what does the word Preview mean? That means it's the coming attractions. It's not the real, this should say Publish in Browser. Preview in Browser confuses people because they don't think it's the real live web, it's the real live publishing. Preview in Browser. It should say publish in browser. Anyway, enough of that rant. So Firefox, testing, yes, dependent files, no, because the branding tags already, the branding HTML tags already up there. Now, because I gave a suffix of s.shtml, watch what happens. Okay, so there, it's my server site include. And as soon as my connection decides to come up here, which is a very fast connection, but apparently, there you go. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to fix the HTML, the CSS rules in just a second. Okay, because this is way too big for our taste, what we want to do here. Now, we're gonna do the same thing for this section and the new section. So let's go back to Dreamweaver. Now, to do this the correct way, if you notice most of my videos, I try to stay away from code. Now, why do I try to stay away from code? Am I afraid of it? No. I had to build code way before there was Dreamweaver or a page mill or a front page. I had to learn how to write code from scratch. My days of writing code are over with. I want to use Dreamweaver. Dreamweaver is a multi-million dollar product that they put money into. Why do you want to sit there and write code? My mantra for my training classes is this. Do you want to learn how to write code or do you want to make money? Okay? You want to learn how to write code or do you want to make money? My skills will make you money. You'll be faster, quicker, better than everybody else because you're benefiting from the Dreamweaver interface. So let's basically take this tag here. We're gonna take the UL tag. Now, and so we get the whole entire tag here. We're gonna go to code and make sure we get this entire tag here. We're gonna cut the tag, command X. We're not gonna cut the nav tag. We're gonna cut this, command X, cut. Okay, we're now gonna make a brand new page File new, new file, and again, we're going to kill 
all the code on here that we don't need. Now, why am I doing that? Because if I include a title on top of a title, it, the, the, the parent page can get very confused here. So we're just going to paste. Okay. Now, the, how this is formatted, the structure doesn't matter at this point. We can just delete that, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to call this menu. In fact, let's call this uh, nav main menu. Because as you're aware of, we could have many, learn how to spell, that'd be a good thing. We could have many menus in our site. This is nav main menu. Okay, so I go back to my document here. I put my cursor right there. I go up to the insert menu and I go to server side include. Navigate your way to that file, which is nav main menu and we're all good to go. Now notice that it came in with its proper formatting because there's a CSS rule for that. So I can't overemphasize that enough. There's a rule for that. It's a very important step here, guys. I did not make rules for this. This is simply the markup, the HTML markup. I marked up my content with tags. So it's a UL tag, it's an A tag. So therefore, once this content gets into the parent page, which is this page, it knows exactly what to do with it. So let's look at the code for server side include. It's a very simple piece of code. It simply says include file. Include file, name of the file. Okay, simple as pie. It could not be simpler than that. Okay, so we can do the same thing with footer. So let's go to footer. Let's select the content here. Now again, make sure that you get the entire tag. Not footer, just the content. So delete that, we're gonna, I'm sorry, cut that, correct vocabulary, cut, make a new file. And again, I don't wanna have any code on here. I simply wanna have this and save the file. And let's call that footer. Now again, if you wanna call footer underscore child, so you know that it's the footer server side include content, whatever helps you because it's not about naming files for today, it's what does that file mean to you six months from now, six years from now, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So let's go back to design mode. Okay, let's put our cursor right down here at the bottom. Set footer. Okay, so it's not paying attention here. Okay, now what happens sometimes is sometimes the CSS is in the way of your of your cursor, of your content. So what you could do is go to view toolbars, make sure under toolbars that style render is, turn, is checked. If that's checked, you can come up here and turn your CSS off. So I could turn my CSS off from up here, therefore I put my cursor there, that's one approach. The other approach is I can just go to my code and I can go to where my footer is and I can just say, Insert server side include. Navigate your way to footer and print in footer. Simple, simple, simple. Now, let's understand something. For those of you that are a little confused by this, and again, it's following the formatting of footer. So, again, the CSS is not inside the child tag, the CSS is inside the parent tag. Okay, so again, let's publish this file. So, people in browser. Preview browser, Firefox, dependent files, testing server, yes. Dependent files, yes. So the footer tag has to go up there. The navigation tag has to go up there. The branding tags are already up there. So, but I still have to say dependent files, yes. Okay. So for those of you that are a little puzzled by this, saying, well, why are you going through all that, you know, brain damage to do this when why you just do it inside the page itself. Well, for those of you that doubt my production techniques, here's the fiesta resistance. Here's the reason why you want to use server side include. So let's say you're a client, and again, you got to put on your thinking caps here for a second, guys. Now, we're going to continue this in our next video because this video is going a little long. So I'll continue this next, understanding why we use server side include and how we can make changes to it.